and a record. Sure. Thank you. So what have you been doing? It's been pleasant, apart from providing tests for people. It'll take three hours to... What have you been doing? It's been enjoyable. Oh, well, I did actually finish that garden uh -huh. just this week. So it's been a long, drawn-out procedure, but it's okay. done. So um, all the plants went in. It's all there. Mm -hmm. Everything's been great. So okay. that was good. And uh, it's looking good? Looking good, looking yeah. good, and it's in unbelievable because it, the delay between it finishing and the whole thing of starting is because there were so many setbacks yeah. and obstacles along the way, and then yeah. we finally got there, and now I sit back and say, I actually got exactly what I had envisaged, and at the times there I couldn't believe that it was ever going to happen. So I've been in the depths of depression in the last few weeks because I've been seeing that it's not happening and then it came back and it happened. So and what happened good. to the depression when? Oh, that went. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I knew that would go once okay. the, the garden came yeah, good, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, It's hard to have too big a problem <clears throat> with being depressed knowing that it's only temporary. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even worry about it. Uh, other people yeah. worried about it and yeah. they, they thought that I was taking it really badly when it looked the garden was not good and people were saying it's all right it looks great and I was going no it doesn't it looks shocking and it was quite funny but um I didn't it, I didn't stress about it I just knew I had to keep going and I had to mm. get fixed and it got fixed it's perfect finished <clears throat> and is it, you're feeling what satisfied now you're feeling pleased mm. what do you feel what's the what's the feeling about it yeah <clears throat> incredulous is a large oh, okay. part of it that it actually came together. Yeah, well, just because it happened, you don't have to believe it. Yeah, well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that adds another element to it. Because <laughs> I can't believe it. Yeah, it, it, it does take a little while sometimes. It's like a jet lag. You, know, you, mm. you, you see it, but it takes a little while to really, really accept it. Yeah, I think that's true. And it's not a bad thing. I, I quite like that. I can't believe this because it keeps it a little bit special. It keeps yes. it a little bit sort of in that novel. Mm, exactly. Yeah. 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 It's mm. sort of it is a bit dreamlike. I keep looking at it and thinking, mm. how on earth did it swing from when it was going off the tracks to yeah. when I had workmen who couldn't do what I seemed to be communicating, and then yeah. Yeah. and then I lost the plot, and then it yeah. got veered so badly, and then it came back bit by bit, and then boom slot it straight back in yeah. and that, that's the incredulous journey of how it happened mm, mm. and it is I'm just standing there in the morning just going oh. <laughs> you're still enjoying the shock of it oh yeah the shock the shock is huge mm. yeah so that'll be fun it's good to know what a shock is like isn't it? wouldn't it be terrible if you looked at it and thought oh yeah oh, um, what's next yeah I'd be bored to tears probably mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah I do like that. I do mm. like that. It's exciting. Mm. And then, of course, I'm thinking, what will I do next to mm. um, add the fine touches so that there'll yeah. always be something to discover. Okay. So then you'll never get really bored by it. You'll never get really... Uh, mm -hmm. There'll always be that kind of edge. Yeah. That, yep. mm. There's something coming up here. There's this mm. thing there. If I remember, you said that you you planned it with that there were going to be different colours, uh, different things coming at different times of yep. year. There's always going to be something. Yep. And then there's also been planned that as the canopy grows higher, the next canopy's planted to grow up underneath it. Ah. So that there's going to be there's sort of like the ten year plan and the five year plan and the, <laughs> and the plan as it is now. And you can actually it is just so exciting to sort of have it already planted in there and know that. This is how it will evolve, or mm. maybe this yeah. is how it will evolve. In that general direction. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. It's definitely going to evolve. Yeah, definitely <laughs> will do that. Now, you probably find out afterwards just how it evolved. Mm hmm. I won't know before. No. And that's part of the excitement, part of the, mm. the joy of it. Mm. Mm. It's mm. waiting to see. Waiting to see. Mm. And getting through that feeling like it's never going to happen. It's just. Too much, too too many things have gone wrong. It's yeah. just too much damage here, too much trauma here. Um, <clears throat> now, you said there was something that you were interested to explore to make mm -hmm. a difference to, something that had happened. Mm, yeah. 
uh, when my son was six, Peter is his name, he got meningococcal septicemia. Mm-hmm. And um, he got very, very ill very rapidly. He had just sort of what looked like a cold and um, a fever. And that day I was meant to go out and all day. I actually had a babysitter booked and he came in to me at seven o'clock and he was just burning up. And I gave him a drink of water and he just vomited it up everywhere and I saw how hot he was. And I took him and put him in a tepid bath to bring his temperature down. And he just looked so ill that I just reached, it was really weird. It was like I'd gone into a different mode. I reached for the phone, called the babysitter and said, I'm just canceling today. I've got to stay. Mm. And I just put him to bed and it was very uncharacteristic of him <clears throat> that he went to bed and stayed in bed. Mm. And that got me more and more worried because mm. with a cold, he'd never ever responded yeah. that way before. Yeah. And yeah, as nothing, the, nothing more worrying than a well-behaved child. Exactly. <laughs> and staying in his bed and sleeping. Yeah. And um, anyway, I would go in every so often and take him drinks because it was very hard to keep his temperature down. And I was giving him, you know, four hourly Panadol and this, that and the other. And I went in at one stage and made him actually get up to sit in front of the TV for a bit because I was getting so worried yeah. about the way he was just lying there. Mm. And he then said, could you help me go to the toilet? I think I'm too weak to walk. So I did. And then half an hour later, he said, I think I need to go again. And when I pulled his pants down in his groin was the beginning of the petechial rash, uh-huh. the first one. <laughs> and then I checked all over his body and I found another few little pinpoints just around his ankle on that bone there that sticks out. And I thought, oh, maybe it's just some little mm. blood droplets have just landed there, but I wiped my finger over it because it looked so transparent mm. that I thought it was actually little blood bits coming mm. out and I wiped it and it didn't go away. And then I had that moment where I thought, mm. The floor's opening up yeah. and I'm going to fall down. Yeah. This is my son has a yeah. really bad illness. Yeah. So I rang my husband, who is a doctor, and he was at work. And he said, well, call the GP because the GP had known us for 10 years. And I rang there and they said, oh, I explained everything. I said, he's got, um, I think he's got neck stiffness. I think he is photophobic. He's got the particular rash. I think it's meningococcus. And they said, well, the waiting room's booked out and we've got people here for two hours. You'll have to just wait. And I said, no, I can't wait. If, mm. if, if I'm right, yeah. he could be dead in yeah. two hours. Yeah. And I then thought, well, I'll just take him into the children's. That's what I should do. And then I thought, that's amazing. I just gave a textbook answer mm. for what is wrong with this child. That should have brought out really big emergency sort of thoughts in that doctor. So I, th- I rang back and I said, I'm getting a little flustered here. Maybe I didn't make myself clear. And I repeated it, particular rash theme, um, high temperatures, photophobia, and by then I checked he did have neck stiffness mm. as well. And I, I was talking to the GP who knew I was a microbiologist who taught med students about microbiology. Yeah. And he said, I still can't see you for two hours. Oh, my God. And I just said, right, well, I'm driving to the children's. Yeah. And he just said, well, you do that. Yeah. And I hung up and just got in the car. I had to get my autistic daughter, of course, and get her to get in the car. And it used to always be the sort of thing that she couldn't easily be moved in a rush. But I said to her, Peter's sick, get in the car. And she just got up and walked out and got in the car. Interesting. And um, she then, we were driving along, she turned around and said to him, he was lying down in the back seat by now, he couldn't actually sit up. He'd started to get, the fluid was um, releasing out of his blood vessels. And it was like he was a sack full of water. If I carried him, the fluid was going from one end to the other. And I just had to lay him down. She leaned over and said, Peter, we're going to get you to the hospital in no time. And I was just driving along thinking she's just made the first novel sentence mm, of her life. Mm, and I went, this is a truly weird day. I know something mm, special is happening here and it's mm, not good. Mm. But anyway, I drove like the devil and got in there 
and got held up by a really horrible nurse in triage who wouldn't see him, mm. even though I begged people. And in the end, after waiting 20 minutes, I stacked a little tanty and said that you've got to see him now. He can't wait another minute. Mm. Because kids were going through with broken arms mm. and getting seen first. And I was saying, uh -uh, you know, it's yeah. now time. Yeah. And I tried to be good in the whole 20 minutes. And then they saw him and they just scrambled yeah. to intensive care and it yeah. was okay. And, but then he nearly died. So it was Ooh. really, really awful. He was in 45 minutes. He was on a ventilator sure. and he was in a coma in an hour. They sent me out to go and buy um, the rifampicin for my husband and I to take the antibody to clear the carrier stain. And I went before he went to intensive care and the whole time I was out buying this down in City Road, Brunswick, I was thinking I may never see my son yeah. alive again. Yeah. And it was, seemed really cruel that they'd sent me yes. out of the hospital yes. to go and buy that rather than calling a pharmacist. Yes, yes, that is cruel. And um, I got back and he was in, in a coma. Human, actually. In yeah. Human. More than cruel. And I got back and he was in a coma. And for the rest of the night, he was really just hanging on. Mm. And it got to about three in the morning or two in the morning. And I had been dozing and I woke up and went to see the team. It was just a team working around him. They had a doctor at his bedside all the time and about five nurses and technicians, everything was being done. Hmm. And they turned around, they all looked at me and they said, um, we just have to say that fatality is a definite um, moment here, hmm. that we're doing everything for him, but hmm. everything we do, hmm. it just reverses and we go to the crisis in the opposite extreme. Hmm. And um, I went and woke my husband up who'd fallen asleep, but he just walked in, saw all the readouts and just put his head down and that was it. He just yeah. tuned out. And in fact, I just started to talk to Peter about all the things that he loved and all the good things that, because um, they were saying his heart was probably going to give out because his body was full of fluid. It was no longer within blood vessels and things. It was just swishing around. Yeah and his heart just wouldn't be able to pump it around. So I thought, if I can talk to him to get that heart to hang in there just for another 24 hours, they were doing their best to get the fluid loader out of him. And so I talked to him um, about stuff that he loved. We were building a tree house for him at the time. And I said, you know, get out of here and the, there'll be a tree house. And the little eyebrow went up, oh. one eyebrow. And then um, I said, so there's the tree house coming. And, you know, I did promise, we did promise you a new bike. Up went the eyebrow. Oh. And then I said, and you know how you always want to play chess? We'll be playing chess so much, mm. no eyebrow. <laughs> and I'm going, ooh. <laughs> so I tried it again, no yeah, eyebrow. Find out, find out the important things. <laughs> yeah. Mm. And I went through like that. And I just kept naming. And for about two hours, I just named and talked and um, talked to him about how we'd both been doing all this health and fitness stuff and that we could get back there. And I actually felt a tugging in my stomach as though there was a cord linking him and I. Mm -hmm. And after about two hours, I looked up and um, there was a nurse at the, his head end and she said, he's going to make it. And I said, yeah, I think so too. And um, everyone else was saying, oh, there's... We're, we're in deep shit here. There's nothing mm. about good about to happen. Mm. And she and I just sat back and went, well, we feel something's changed. And he actually, um, he had a bit of a rocky road, but he came out of it and mm. he survived. Mm. But what I'm finding now is that all these years later, actually what happened after that, we got him home, he was fine, and our marriage broke up. Mm. It had been on the rocks anyway. And... Um, but now what I find is sometimes I go into his room. It was much worse before when he was younger. But I go into his room to wake him up and he lies, he sleeps in the nude. And if I go walk in and see his chest just lying there and he's asleep, I get the flashback yeah. straight to intensive care. Yeah. And I think he's dying. Yeah. And I get the whole thing. And I can have this every morning before mm. I even go to work someday. Yes, yes, yes. So... Um, and I've also got this thing that I have this sort of belief now that the absolute worst can happen. Like, I remember sitting there at one stage thinking, 
I can accept if he comes out with brain damage because I already have one child with brain damage. So if I could just be allowed to take him home mm-hmm. and I'll have him. And that was just a really amazing moment to get to yeah. that, to sort of think, I'll take my yeah. child with brain damage if yeah. I have to. Yeah. And now, so that really changed me a lot as a person because I realized that the bad things can just keep happening. They can. They can. Mm. And what would be a preferred experience for you? What would you rather have happen? I mean, he's precious to you. Mm. Um, I mean, he always was, but somehow even more now. Yeah. And you don't want to lose that. No. So what, when you um, go in the morning, how would you like to, what would you like to have happen there? Well, I would like it that, you know, I could open the door and see him and actually be ecstatic that I'm seeing his body there instead of that vision Mm. thrusting me straight back to that fear Mm. and that distress. So when when he came home and he got through it, there were some setbacks, but he got through it. And do you remember the first time that you saw him and instead of thinking he's going to make it, thinking he has made it? Do you remember? If you were to remember what it's like to look there back then, those years ago, Mm-hmm. And see him. And say, ah, he has made it. If you could just look at that for a moment, and perhaps as you're looking, have in the background the garden, knowing that the garden wasn't going to make it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And even they know the garden has made it. Mm. And maybe some bad things are going to happen. Certainly some things are going to happen in the garden. Some will be bad. It can be. Mm. Sort of that. But you somehow, you can't believe that the garden has made it. But you look at the garden and there's some appreciation there. There's some, it's not exactly peaceful acceptance, but there's something... And that, that feeling, looking at the garden, I can't believe it. It's so good. And it's going to be even better. as it grows. It's going to be even more. And having the garden in the background, and somehow seeing Peter now in the foreground, he's made it. Mm. And when you look at him, look at his body, and you see he has made it. Hmm. And if you can look at that and really see it and really feel it, you can be incredulous. Even though you know he has made it, at some level you can feel, I can't believe this. But there's something about I can't believe it which makes him, makes the garden, makes the experience even more precious, even more lively, even more vigorous. And as you look at that image of him years ago, when you saw he he has made it, and how clearly can you see his body and see he has made it? Clearly? And as you look at that, how do you feel? Calm. Oh, really? Not incredulous? 
Mm, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's hard to believe, but you feel calm. Mm. You didn't dare believe. You hoped. You knew at the same time you hoped and you didn't dare hope. It was all the, but you see now, he has made it. And you can feel calm. Mm. Mm. And it's good to know he has made it. Just like the God. And just like none of the workmen would do what, what was needed. Bloody nurses and doctors who funny. Mm. <laughs> but the garden has, and even, you know, the garden, you lost it. And with Peter, you lost it. So sometimes losing it is a good thing. I'm reminded of that, one of my favourite stories that I may have even mentioned before about a man living with his son. And a horse comes into the farm. <laughs> yeah, you know that story? And the, and the neighbour says, that's good. Mm -hmm. And the farmer says, well, it might be good, it might be bad. Son gets on the horse, falls off and breaks his leg. The neighbour says, that's bad. The farmer says, it might be bad, it might be good. The uh, king's uh, recruiting people come around looking for soldiers. Boy's got a broken leg, can't go to the army. The neighbour says, oh, that's good. And the farmer says, well, oh, it might be good, it might be bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> we find out afterwards, hey? But um, my friend Bill McLeod told me that the end of that story was that the horse ran away. And uh, the neighbour said, oh, that's, that's bad. And the farmer said, it might be bad, it might be good. And they went looking for the horse and found a whole herd of them and brought them back and they were very, mm. very uh, rich as a result of that. But um, the garden was the way it was and you thought it wasn't going to make it. And every time you looked at it, you could see a lot of doubt, a lot of uncertainty. But now you look and see the garden's made it. Then you can look at Peter back then and say, he's made it. And you can feel calm. It's good to know that you can feel calm. He's made it. How does that feel when you let yourself know calmly, he has made it? That feels good, yeah. but I guess the next thought is... What if, what's the next thing? Oh, there'll be a next thing. That's <laughs> <laughs> bit I'm worried about. Oh, fair enough. Well, that's future trouble. We'll have to deal with that later. But, I mean, the stuff to do with the garden, too. Some bad stuff's going to happen to that garden. Mm. Some of the plants might die. I don't know. Someone might, Peter might tread on something or <laughs> break something or, I don't know. But what have you learned from the garden up till now that's going to help you to deal with the things in the garden in the future? Oh, that there's just always a new plan out there. That's right. And you can talk to the plants, you can talk to yourself, and you can watch for the eyebrows going up. <laughs> look for signs of life. <laughs> a sign of life. You look for it. And the fact that your daughter got into the car and said what she said. Mm -hmm. Maybe that wouldn't have happened without that. Mm -mm. So, you know, no one would wish that on anyone, but, you know, it was bad, but it may have been good too. And you'll never take him for granted, that's for sure. And you found out about your husband, and you found out about that GP, and you found out about that bitch of a nurse. Mm -hmm. And you found out about the system of sending you away to get some. Sometimes um, there are some inhuman, sometimes there's some cruelty, sometimes stuff happens. And uh, there'll be cruelty in, in the future. You can be certain of that. But as you say, if you look for signs of life, watch for that eyebrow. And sometimes it doesn't go up when you think it will. 
he thought it would go up with chess, but it didn't. And he found out something there. Mm. And the same thing can happen with the garden. Some unexpected things can happen. Uh, you can find out some things. So you can find out what's important. I remember Erickson saying that he, he loved to walk along a footpath and see a weed growing up between bricks, between a little crack in the concrete. I've been driven to the airport the other day and along a cutting in the road, a rock face, there's a tree growing. There's no soil there, there's a tree growing. How do they do that? Yeah. So when you look tomorrow morning and you see Peter and you see he has made it, how does that feel? Sort of good and right. Yeah. There may be some time, some years in the future where you might think, I wish you hadn't made it. (laughs) (laughs) When I was 18, I crashed the family car for the second time in six weeks. (laughs) I think my father wished I hadn't made it. But tomorrow morning, can you look forward to looking tomorrow morning and seeing and knowing Peter made it? How does that feel? It feels good. Yeah. Any doubts about that? Any any qualifications there? A little something in the way you said that? Oh, I think, um, no, I don't have doubts. I mm. just think it's... Uh, it's such a change. Yeah. It's going to be a change. But oh, okay. I, I can see it. Is it too, yeah. too drastic a change? Um, probably not too drastic. It would be a good change. <laughs> yeah, but it, it might be nice if you didn't have it happen all at once. It may be tomorrow when you go and look, there might be, ah, oh, he made it, and there might be little shadows of, he might not have all. Wouldn't it be awful if you hadn't? Mm. That, that kind of, there might be some of that sort of shimmering around the edge of that. Mm. And I personally, and this is just my opinion, I think it would be beautiful if even in 10 years' time you were to see him and have just a momentary remember, remembering of was he going to make it. It helps to keep him precious. Mm. Like with the garden, to look back and think, you know, there were times when you knew it was going to be catastrophic. Somehow makes it more precious. Mm, it does. You don't need to get rid of it totally. Is that more agreeable? Yeah, that is. Yeah, good. That's great. Oh, good. Ah. <laughs> that is good. Okay, are we done? Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, a precious, such a precious experience. Mm. How precious! Yeah, it's got a, it's got a lot in it. But, yeah. Um, yeah. And it feels better now to. Yeah. Good, I see that. <clears throat> imagine that. Mm. I even like that idea about just sort of not trying to get rid of it completely well you, you let me know that because there was a way that you said yes it was a kind of it was like a little mm. sniff of something there yeah it wasn't quite convinced no, or... something like that. Mm. I was convinced in my mind I actually yeah, had the feeling that I could do it but yeah, it was sort of was such a, a big change there was, yeah there was a qualification there was a kind of a, there was something in the way you responded that it was like maybe too big a change. So right. it seemed that you were asking to let that happen a little bit less dramatically. Or, mm-hmm. 
Yeah, well, that feels great, actually. I mean, just just imagine if uh, your garden, they did one of those television shows, you know, where they come <laughs> in and suddenly there's a garden. It's like, yeah. oh, get out of here. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you would be really yeah. deflated if oh. you had that happen to you. Oh, that'd be awful. In a weekend yeah. flat. Um, yeah. This has really got my money's worth out of this. You know, it's been about three months. Okay. I'm just non-stop yeah. doing things. And, yeah. So maybe you want, might want to take three months to let this happen too. Mm. No, that could be right. And even for some of the time, you might the flashbacks might be there very strongly and you might think, oh, this is going to be permanent. There's no way out of this. Mm. And then I can sort yeah. of think maybe they won't yeah. be permanent. Yeah. Actually, you don't know. No. But it's nice to know that there are various options and you can somehow feel lost at times, but know that you can manoeuvre and eventually you'll get to where you get to. Yeah, that's just the next next plan to try. Yeah, yeah, good.